What's up, guys? Welcome back to Call of the Wild, the Angler. We've got another live stream from the devs. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be Jaxi, who's going to be kind of leading it. And uh, we got Rushy, who's supposed to be joining him, one of the developers. And uh, Gaz, another developer, is supposed to be uh, joining in on the stream to give us some insight as to, uh, hopefully, some insight as to what is going to happen, what is happening, and all that other good stuff, just like last live stream. This is going to be a live look for me, a uh, live look from me. Um, I haven't previewed this at all. So uh, I'm going to try to, uh, in post, I'm going to try to cut out all the uh, non essential stuff, um, just like last time, and uh, just show you the key points. Uh, that way we can all stay uh, somewhat informed on what's going on. So let's get in it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Anglers of all ages, welcome to this week's Tackle Box. My name is Jaxie Beer. All right, so uh, yeah, we do have Jaxie, the community uh, host, Gaz, the executive producer for the game, and Rushy, the game director. So um, yeah, I, I didn't, I couldn't remember for the life of me their titles. That's why we came back to this. So let's continue on. It is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's been a little bit of uh, a stint since we've been back, and I, I apologize, but I'm hale and healthy. And I got these two fine gentlemen with me today. I think it's going to be a good one. Mr. Rushy, Mr. Gaz, thank you for coming to join us. Excited to have you here. Hello. Good to be back, as you said. It's yeah. been a while, hasn't it? It has. It's been has. a while since we were last on. Well, I had a man cold. You have to call my mom to ask about that, but... Oh, yeah, we know a good couple of spots. I mean, <laughs> we have all the data. We see where everyone's catching the fish, and uh, we know where they spawn. So not to give the game away, but we'll, we'll head to the northwest of, uh, of the lake here, and uh, there's a good few spots up there that I think we can we can get some decent-sized um, largemouth bass. <laughs> yeah, and we've been we've been keenly watching the diamond catches as well because, again, we, we track everything on the server side so we can see, you know, where you're catching them, how often you're catching them, uh, you know, often they're spawning inside the world, and um, I think we've got a much, much better balance since the last patch. Uh, uh, you know, Norway in particular, you know, they're much, much easier to catch them. And we've balanced out some of the species in Golden Ridge, and for the next update, we're we're also making a couple of tweaks. Uh, I think specifically around the, I think the Zander and maybe the Sauger. I can't, I, can't, I don't have the oh, the stuff top of my head, yeah. but we are. We are making some tweaks to just a couple more just to change some of the rates. Again, it's one of those things that constant iteration, the feedback that we, we see in Discord and also looking at the data and making sure we're getting the, the right level so it feels it feels fair and balanced. Yeah, so um, there was an issue. Uh, we addressed it in the last video of uh, the live stream review type thing where diamonds were not being caught in Norway and so they had to make some adjustments there um, and now they've they've got that fixed um, supposedly I don't know I haven't been on the Norway map in a while uh, I've been focusing on Golden Ridge Reserve personally but um, they also mentioned uh, Rushy just mentioned that they're going to make some more adjustments to Golden Ridge Reserve um, he said he thinks it's a sauger he doesn't know for sure so don't quote me or him on that. But um, they are going to make some more adjustments on Golden Ridge Reserve, um, probably uh, in Norway as well. But um, that is something that they're, they're working on. And as you heard, uh, they have all the data. They know where people are catching diamonds. They know where people are not catching diamonds. They know the, uh, the rate, um, if you will, of diamonds being caught. So... Uh, they are looking at the data and they're fine tuning it, so I, I appreciate that. Um, they, it seems like they've made it harder, which I'm, I've got mixed feelings about that. But um, I mean, I was doing the uh, the Diamond Bluegill mission on uh, Golden Ridge Reserve, and it took me wow, what did it take me? I think I tried for that stupid fish for about eight or ten hours over the course of like three or four days before I finally got it. Um, yeah, it, I don't think it should take that long, at least if you're on a mission, I don't think it should take that long. 
Um, that's just my own personal opinion, but uh, there we have it. I mean, that's that's how it's working out so far. It almost seems like the the diamond, the mission for the diamonds is you have basically the same chance of catching a diamond if you're not on a mission. That's how it feels. The difference is when you're not on a mission, you have to go out there and try to find it without any markers. Um, you have to use your knowledge to go out and find it. Whereas with the missions, it kind of leads you to where they know the diamond is going to spawn. Um, at least while the mission is activated. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, what they, we'll see what comes up with it or what comes from it. And uh, I'm curious to see what else they got for us. Well, I know that's appreciated. I, I've been watching it happen and finding that balance. And uh, yeah, it's a, like, like, as you say, the last patch, you know, there was, uh, well, that wasn't even the last one. It was the one before that, wasn't it? Where the, the diamond spawn yeah. rates were adjusted in Norway, right? And then you're yeah, saying we, we have another one coming on this big one coming up. Yeah, we, um, we, we realized after looking at the data that there was a bit of an issue with the diamond spawns on, on GRR, which was quickly, quickly resolved. Ha! I knew it! I knew it! I freaking knew it! Gaz just confirmed it. On the last video, I said the diamond spawn rates on GRR seems to be broken or something along those lines. And Gaz just confirmed that I was right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hopefully, they'll, they'll really fine tune it and get it get a good mixture man um i'm glad to know that my beliefs my thoughts on it was correct as confirmed by the executive producer of the game that's awesome well, um, let's go on data we're seeing like the same ones getting caught more than others uh we're taking feedback from you know discord and, and steam forums and stuff like that uh, as well as checking the data to, to make sure they're all you know nice nice and evenly matched and and players can can enjoy catching all the different types of diamonds so yeah keep that feedback coming because it's all good. We keep tweaking and, and keep balancing it to, to get the game where it needs to be. Yeah, and on that kind of subject with tweaking and balancing, you know, one of the things that uh, we've seen a lot of feedback on is the kind of debate and low compatibility. Um, people yeah. are finding that a bit too often that any fish will go for any any bait or lure, and it becomes hard if you're trying to target a specific species or a specific rank. So we've been doing a good chunk of um, tuning in those areas to to allow you to target more specifically the fish you're after. Um, so I think that's going to go down quite well. That's Again, that's for our, for our next update, um, and that, that's feeling pretty good. It, in, some, in some respects, it makes it slightly harder in some instances just to get any old fish, but I think it makes it a lot better in particular. If you know I think it makes it a lot. Right, so uh, I just want to quickly address that. Um, so yeah, that has been an, an issue. Um, as uh, Rushi just said, you can, for the most part, most fish will bite on any bait or lure, um, which makes it really, really hard to target a specific species of fish. And it looks like in this next update, which should be coming either this month or next month, um, they're going to try to fine tune that a little bit to where, say, if you're going after um, Sauger, maybe uh, you'll, you'll have to use more of the live bait stuff like minnows, leeches. Um, what else do we have? Uh, red worms and blood worms um, to, to really target the Sauger. Um, basically, it sounds like they're going to try to make the fish a little bit more picky on what bait they they actually use which uh, means I'm gonna have to do some some work <laughs> on my uh, on my spreadsheets um, when that goes into play because uh, right now I've got spreadsheets for both of the, uh, the reserves and um, what you can catch with what bait and stuff like that uh, from silver all the way up to gold or no silver all the way up to diamond sorry uh, for each species, uh, so yeah, that's gonna that's gonna throw a wrench in my work, but that's okay. Um, as long as it makes the game better, I'm I'm okay with that. But um, yeah, I just I know their accents can be hard for some people to distinguish. So that's basically what Rushy just said. The main, uh, let's continue. The main on. drive behind this is that we want players to be able to get their get their hands on development builds to the game and give us more direct feedback so that we can 
be making tweaks and changes with that kind of informed um you know uh, opinions from from those people who are like really invested in the game so i think it's gonna be fantastic to have the player council with you know plenty of players you can play our builds early get the hands on on you know features before they come out and you know and give us the feedback before it goes live Uh, I like the idea of that, but it really kind of undercuts the whole idea of being a community contributor because that's supposed to be one of the rewards for being a community contributor, which I'm not, by the way, um, and I never will be. <laughs> that's a story for another time. If you guys want to hear the story of why I will never be a community contributor, uh, let me know and I'll do a video on that. But um, uh that's one of the rewards is getting early access to um to 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 development builds um so i'm not i'm kind of confused if expansive worlds approved that or if this is this team's decision to just do it um not that there's many community contributors that actually focus on the angler um but i mean I don't know. I, I, I've got mixed feelings about that. Uh, I'm probably going to look into this little program um, just to see if it's something I'm interested in doing. I don't know if I really have the time to do that. Well, I'll have the time con come April um, because my, my hours for work is changing. But um, maybe I'll look into it. Let me know if you guys would be interested in, uh, in me doing that and then I can hopefully share some of uh what's coming down the pipelines with you guys i don't know how that's going to work but um i'll look into it if uh and if you guys really want me to do it then uh, i'll go ahead and apply but again let me know and uh, we'll see where it goes let's continue on it is hangster what's up brother it is a fantastic idea you guys have seen we you know we we try to be as open as we can it's it, we're not a company that's going to make a game that we want to make and not listen to anybody. As you've seen, especially with these devs, uh, it's about what you guys want. So this player council is the next step in. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jaxie, I'm cutting you off there. But um, yeah, that has been true, especially for the angler. Um, the hunter call the wild, not so much. Um, it seems like the hunter's dev team is kind of just doing whatever the hell they want. Um, they used to pay attention to the community uh, for the most part, uh, but nowadays it doesn't seem like they're really doing that anymore, which is the reason why I left that community. But um, this one, the, the dev team for the Angler, um, I love these guys right now. Um, Rushy, Gaz, all of them. Um, they, they're doing great work, and they're really, really trying to make this an amazing game. So uh, I support uh, them, and hopefully you do too. And, and what it looks like, you guys will see more as it transpires uh, over the next week or two here. What I would recommend if you're interested in doing so is follow the link off of the posts. It's a short survey, a little bit of info to put in there. Of course, there's the disclaimers. Um, and uh, then we're going to go through a whole process of, on, on who we get in. It's, it's going to be a limited amount, but it's a sizable amount. So, uh, But I don't have any numbers to divulge as of yet. How strict is the acceptance rate on when applying? Well, um, so I'm not the one who's going to be vetting, so to speak. Uh, I mean, every every single uh, application is going to be looked at. So just fill that out, and uh, we're going to have to see how that unfolds. We have a team that's managing this to get it created and start it up. And, of course, you know, I'll be in there. What's up, Lawrence? Good to see you all. What's happening? Uh, is it possible to get into the player council being 18 plus? No, unfortunately, that is one of the requirements. You must be 18 plus, and that has to do with the NDA, the non disclosure agreement. That All right, so uh, <laughs> I had a feeling there would be an NDA involved. Um, so I'm still going, I, th I think I'm going to go ahead and apply anyways, because um, I'm curious. And you know what? I'm probably going to apply right here on video, or it'll, it'll be the next video. I don't know. Um, depending on what kind of information is required, I, I'm not going to show personal information, but, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and apply and, uh, we'll see what comes sign. of it. Uh, which is wish me luck. And for those who don't know, um, an NDA 
what that is is that's a non-disclosure agreement and what a non-disclosure agreement is for those of you who may not understand uh, the legalities and stuff like that is when you sign a non-disclosure agreement it's usually very specific I mean, it tells you what you can and cannot talk about. Consider it like a, a classified document, right? Um, so, like, if I were to get access to these development builds, I'm willing to bet that the NDA states that I can't come on here on YouTube and say, hey, this is what they're doing, or um, this is what I found out, or something like that, until that particular part of it is released to the public then I can go ahead and release those videos um, so I mean that's that's something but I would I, I think I would still like to uh, be a tester which is essentially what this is going to be it's having a, a select group of player testers um, go out there and test these builds and see what we find and um, submit our feedback back to the game developers and um, one of the reasons why they want to have a non-disclosure agreement is because if you're showing um, a development build there is potential for people to pick up on hacks um, that's one thing another thing is is uh, just because it's in a development build doesn't mean it's gonna make it to the, the public and so by telling the, the people who have this access that they can't disclose that information is kind of a uh, catch your butt type thing, um, watch your butt type thing, cover, cover your arse if you want. Um, it basically keeps people from getting angry at EW for not doing something that somebody else shows in a development build, if that makes sense. Um, anyways, I'm going to get off that horse. Let's let's continue. Yeah, I mean to start off. Yeah, I'm really I'm really excited about this next patch as well because obviously we've done three or four patches this year already, but this um, this next one I'm not going to announce a specific date just yet. But it's not not too far away. Um, is is much much chunkier. This has you know a very broad selection of kind of features and updates. Um, so hopefully it's going to please a lot of players. But yeah, the, the fishing camera improvements that we that you just mentioned uh, that that's one born from again player feedback. So obviously when you're fighting the fish at the moment, we've got a, a camera that kind of blends between your, what you're looking at with the, the fish in the water and your rod. And we've seen a lot of feedback. I was like, oh, I just want the camera to track the fish, or I just want the camera to track my rod movements. So what we've done is now we've given you a slider essentially to to choose. How, how you know how you want the camera to track those behaviors so you can you know if you want it just to track the fish which i think a lot of players want that you can just slide it all the way down or you can just have it like 10 percent. it's it's up to you to kind of tailor that camera to you know how you want to play now uh yeah so that was mentioned in the uh, last live stream that they did um that's something rushy said that they wanted to implement and it looks like we're going to get it uh so basically uh if you watch jacksy fish here you'll see that the camera is kind of anchored to the tip of the rod and for whatever reason that annoys a lot of people I've been playing this game so much that it doesn't even bother me anymore like I don't even notice it but uh, other people do you know I, I'm gonna admit I noticed it when I first played the game I was like well this this is stupid <laughs> um, but it sounds like they're gonna make it to where you can either focus on the rod focus on the fish or do something in between which is really cool I, i'm really curious to see how that plays out and uh to see what kind of differences that makes and maybe i'll do a video on uh on all these new implementations just to screw around with it and see what it does um, let me know if you're inter interested in that um if you are then we're going to do it let me know in the comment yeah, section there's, below there's a couple of things with uh, the line improvements i mean one of the things that um, the line, as, as people have spotted, it doesn't actually directly interact with the water. As you know, different types of lines will actually float on top of the water. Um, so now, now we've added that in on the on the physics side of things. And also, you probably will have noticed as well that the the line itself, you physically can't see it beneath the water. 
in in in, in the live build. So we've made sure that again the rendering side of things it, it it's visible properly and it now reacts correctly to the, the to the physical water as well. So it's just making things look more more realistic and more authentic. All right, so that's kind of cool. It looks like um, if I can try to put it in layman's terms. Uh, the line, your fishing line, is going to be more realistic in the way it reacts or acts with the water. So your lighter nylon line is probably going to float a little bit more, while your heavier braided line, for example, is just going to sink. Um, you're not going to be able to see it, whereas, like I said, the nylon line, you're going to be able to see it above the water. You're going to see it floating above the water a little bit. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. Um, not something I, I personally care about, um, I because I don't. <laughs> um, but I do think it's a nice touch. And, and I'm actually I'm very curious on how this is going to unfold um, as I just went through a few of the techniques myself while casting here is the reeling toggle. So how is the reeling toggle going to, what is this change or, or addition? This is a, a really simple quality of life one, but it's been asked a lot, especially in, in light of, you know, people hunting diamonds more and going for legendaries where, you know, sometimes these fights are pretty epic. They can last a good 10 minutes. And, you know, a good chunk of that fight, you're often holding down the mouse button or, or the right trigger or whatever you've got it bound to on pad or keyboard. Um, and you think I can get a little bit tired. So it's just the option of, you know, if you want to play the game so that you could just tap the button and it just reels for you and tap it again it stops reeling then you can save your finger a lot of hard work with that one and it's the same for something similar as well we're seeing similar sort of kind of feedback on when you're twitching and jigging obviously you're having to you know, move the mouse quite a bit or if you're playing a pad again keep moving those sticks as you as you as you're reeling in and again it can become just a little bit tiresome if you're doing it all the time so with like twitching and jigging there'll be dedicated buttons now to perform those motions so Yo, I like that. I like that. Um, not necessarily the whole thing where it's an auto reel in. Um, I, I guess for some people that would be an issue. Uh, some people have certain medical conditions or physical abilities, so that would be an issue for them. And so it's really nice that, uh, that these devs are addressing that. Um, you don't often see that. So uh, I do appreciate that they're doing that. The one thing that I really like is the auto twitch and auto jig function that he's talking about to where you don't have to continuously move the mouse and stuff like that. I think that's going to be a game changer, honestly. Um, if they do that, the chances are of me jigging um, is going to increase dramatically because the whole reason why I don't jig is because I get tired of moving, moving my mouse up and down uh, for seemingly hours on end, um, it gets it gets annoying. So uh, my my main way of fishing is just a constant reel with the uh, with lures. So um, yeah, that'll be that'll be really nice. Um, I might actually start using you know uh, twitching and and jigging uh, once that's actually implemented. So hey, I love it. Let's continue on. Yeah, I mean, we've done done a whole bunch of things on the vehicles lately. I uh -huh. think in was it the one two one patch we had the the changes to the the camera movement to improve the motion sickness, and we've seen a really good uh, positive reaction to that. Then I think in one two three we 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 fixed or improved how uh, collisions behave in the vehicles so that you you don't snag on things as easily as you would do previously. So it just makes driving more comfortable. And then with the next patch, we've got um, a selection of vehicle cameras to, for you to toggle through, and that's for both the boat and the 4x4 as well. Now, this, this just to stress, this isn't a, a third-person chase camera behind the vehicles. These are a, a range of uh, attached cameras. But again, um, we feel that they offer you know, a, a much kind of less restricted um, perspective, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy being able to have the camera either on top of the vehicle or in front of the vehicle. And, um, you um, yeah. Alright, so what it sounds like uh, Rushi is saying there is this upcoming update, we're going to have, um, we're going to be able to view our vehicles from, say, like a GoPro point of view. Um, like you said, maybe on the hood of the vehicle or on the 
on the mirror or something like that or on the bow of the boat. It, it just gives us different angles that we can move around in the vehicles in, which is really cool. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how that works out. We're definitely going to be taking a look at that when it comes out. So, uh, yeah, nice. Uh, okay, so um, moving down our list, the quick wheel. The quick wheel. Is yeah, now I, I don't think you've seen this. But, no. Um, I think, as you know, if you press Q at the moment, it brings up what we call kind of the quick bar, the quick menu on the left hand side. And from there, you can select a range of options as well as do your quick chat and your, and your remotes and things. Well, we we discovered that you know, it's not necessarily the fastest way to do things. I see Gaz, you know, using it right now, saying howdy inside the game. But it, <laughs> like you get in. I don't know, Apex Legends or a lot of other first person shooters and the like, where you press and hold a button, brings up a wheel, and then you can quickly select the items and dig down between layers of menus. Mm -hmm. So it's just a faster, easier, more convenient way on both pad and mouse to, to either pull up a memo or pull up a, a, a you know a quick chat and it will remember your, your last used ones so you can reuse your favorites quickly as well. So it's just, again, quality of life improvements, yeah. and we definitely want to add more functionality to that wheel over time to start off with it's just going to focus on the emotes and the quick chat but down the line we want to introduce more layers to it as well because it's just a very con convenient way to access stuff uh versus having to go with deeper into the into the, the kind of list based menus yeah and as you say as we add more to it in. yeah as we add more to it it becomes more of a necessity and we are adding um, some more quick chat uh, lines and and some emotes as well to to the game in the next patch. So I yeah, expect a few more a few more things to to use inside the game, which is which is cool. Nice, nice. Well, speaking of the game, so then I know something that's become quite quite popular for a lot of folks, and when you're in the reserve, it's making it feel very populated. You're seeing what others are getting the activity feed updates. How's that going to pan out? Like, what does that look like um, with this update? Yeah, so right now, obviously, you get these reports which pop in from the side of the screen, which we just see Fossil 357 just caught a mountain whitefish. Yeah. Uh, but they pop in one at a time. So it's a kind of one in, one off type of approach. Um, so what we're doing with this is we'll actually change it to a kind of a more traditional, almost like text chat style list. So you can have multiple entries in there at once. You can change the, the text size, um, how often um, they come in, the you can filter each type of activity feed. Some of those options are already there, but we're expanding them, making sure you've got full control over things. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a, a better presentation of that, so you can see what's going on. So things don't don't get queued up in the same way that they they do currently. And longer term, we might want to add some form of chat, proper chat inside there potentially. Oh. Uh, that's not for the next yeah. update, but we're definitely <laughs> looking at that and having a proper feed. Will be important to, to to delivering that i imagine there's going to be some some um challenges with that no so yeah um i like where that's going uh i don't use the quick chat um as it is and i probably never will i've got i've got the whole thing turned off i don't get anything um about what other people on the reserve are doing but um it sounds like they're setting it up uh According to Rushy here, what I'm my big takeaway from this is it sounds like he's setting or not he, but it sounds like the team is setting up for an actual proper chat to where you can actually type in full sentences instead of just using, you know, the little quick chats or emotes. Um, that's what it sounds like he's trying to set up. And as he just said, it would make it a lot easier if they had that uh that feed like uh you see in chat rooms or whatever boy i just dated myself um, but uh it, it would make it easier to be able to implement that if they already have that foundation layer already in place so that's that's awesome um it, if they actually do proper chat in the game then i will definitely have it open and active um just because i do want to be able to chat with people and uh, BS around and whatnot while I'm out there doing stuff. So uh, yeah, I hope that comes to fruition. I really, really do. Obviously, like Rushy said, a, a proper chat is not going to be coming in on this uh, on this next update. But it is something that he really seems passionate about getting put into place. So hopefully, we're going to see that before the end of the year. Let's see what else they got. Get through it. Okay. 
So this one's kind of cool. For those of you who like to get really immersive, uh, there is something coming that uh, I I quite appreciate. Like right now, um, watching right here, I don't need all this information up on the screen. So what's uh, what's the hide UI? I, I'm, it's pretty straightforward, well, I would imagine. Self, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm probably going to cut uh, so the, the explanation for this. Um, so we're going to get the ability to hide our UI, which is all this stuff here on Jaxi's screen. You know, the, the mission here, the, the little toggle reminder on how to cut your line if you wanted to, um, your speed indicator, your... Uh, drag indicator, what you're currently doing, constant, stop and go, twitch, and uh, jigging. And then this information here, um, how far out you're, you're going, if you're float fishing or lure fishing, how deep you are and how deep the water is. Um, they're probably going to set it up to where it's not just going to be where you can hide the whole UI unless you want to. They're probably going to set it up to where you can hide individual aspects of the UI. That way you can keep the information that you want. Like me personally, I would kind of want at least the depth indicator um, and my distance out there. Uh, that's just me. I, I look at that a lot. Um, this stuff here, I can get rid of this whole thing. I, don't, I never look at that stuff. Um, the speed, I might keep that on there. Uh, the drag, I'm, I'll probably keep the drag on there. This I'd get rid of, and um, this I'd probably get rid of as well. Uh, I just, I don't look at this or this or this. So I'd love to be able to get rid of this, this, and this via the options menu. If I can just get rid of it, that'd be great. <laughs> um, so they are they are implementing something like that. Let's... Uh, I might cut the, the rest of this out. I don't know. We're going to see what he has to say about it. If it's um, if we're just cutting the whole UI, the ability to cut all of this out, or if we're going to have the ability to cut certain aspects. Let's find out. We've seen people wanting to take the screenshots and not having to chop off the bottom of the screen or something. So it's just a simple toggle. Press a button, hides the UI. Uh, press another button, comes back. Yep. Dead easy. All right, so it sounds like it's just going to be getting rid of the whole UI, uh, which kind of sucks. <laughs> um, uh, I, it would be nice to have a button to get rid of the whole UI or to have some kind of interface in the options where you can just get rid of some of this stuff. Um, so for the development team, uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about, take a look at Star Wars The Old Republic you have the ability to get rid of certain aspects of your UI. You can also resize it. Now, I don't expect to be able to resize in uh, the Angler, but it would, be it would be nice to be able to get rid of some of these other things or to even reposition them. That might be something to look at. Um, but yeah, um, it kind of let's continue on. When we were talking about this previously, I was I, I was quite excited for this. It may seem to some to be uh, a minor thing, but it is, in my eyes, a big addition. And that is the map filters. Now, without setting expectations uh, yeah. too crazy, do you want to maybe put a little something on there? Oh, I've got one chasing me here. What do you think? What do they look like? Yeah, what well, the filters. Yeah. Yeah, the filter. Essentially, we have we have quite a few icons on the on the map. So, um, and it, it gets a little bit cluttered at times when you you often zoom in and you kind of sit on top of each other, not very nicely at times. So we're looking at we've been looking at a few different ways of solving that. Um, we've got in some cool tech at the moment that kind of you know moves them around and reorders them so they look nicely. Uh, but we've also added options to be able to switch off ones that you maybe. You know, you don't need to know anymore. So you can just have, you know, you can essentially edit the map to to 
just point out the things that you want. So maybe you just want the shop or maybe you just want, you know, the mission board or stuff like that. So um, it's sort of decluttering the map a little bit, let's say. I love that. <laughs> uh, the ability to basically filter out icons in the map. Um, I love that. I absolutely 100% love that. Uh, there's a couple icons, especially on Golden Ridge Reserve, that are hidden behind other icons. Uh, so you, it, it makes it hard to find or to fast travel to those places when you can't click on the icon. Uh, so, hey, I love it. What yeah, do you well, guys think? One of the things that we, what we want to do and always want to continue improving is the performance of the game. You know, we've heard feedback, particularly on those on the kind of min spec sort of end, is that they're, they're struggling to hit the higher frame rates. Um, so we've been working a lot behind the scenes and optimization, making sure that it's taxing your CPU and GPU less and hopefully using a little bit less memory as well. Um, part of that has actually come through some changes we've made to uh, the water. Um, it's called water tessellation. And essentially it's how we kind of split up and break um, the water into, into polys. And it's weird because it's more optimal now and the water is more detailed, which is, it, 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 it sounds like it's the wrong way around. It should be, it should look worse to run better. But in this instance, we've been able to improve the visual fidelity of the water, increase the amount of tessellation, so more polys up close while still reducing the overall load of the water system. So uh, optimization sometimes doesn't always mean cuts. It's, it can sometimes be an improvement as well as, you know, making, making the game run better. And of course, if you're on a higher spec PC, hopefully this means you might be able to up your preference from high to ultra or increase the resolution. You know, it just gives you more flexibility, on, you know, depending on what PC you've got. Very nice. Very nice. Optimization, it's always key. And uh, I don't have any issues on here, but I do see, you know, like, like for instance, my, my daughter, she was playing this with me over the last week and uh, she's on a lower end PC, so she'll greatly appreciate it. Uh, yes, no, yeah, we did it. We, it. Sorry. Just, um, yeah, I was just saying that we, we did notice there was a, a bunch of, of people who'd mentioned performance and we want players to be able to play the game in, in its best light, which, you know, if, if someone hasn't got the most powerful PC, we still want them to have at least a good experience of playing. So we're, we're, we're optimizing as and where we can. And that's going to be a continuous thing again. There'll be a, a one bunch of optimization for this patch and then we'll continue to, to do that with each patch going forward. Um, and also possibly looking at some further graphical settings, what we can uh, allow players to tweak so they can, you know, get even more performance out if they're on lower spec PC. So it is something that um, we're constantly working on to, to improve. And That's really cool. Um, so, yeah, for, for people that have lower end computers, um, it, the game doesn't really perform really good. They get uh, low frame rates. And so the devs, uh, you know, the last stream in this stream, um, Rushy was talking about in the last stream, uh, pushing out with every patch a little optimization, uh, performance improvement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and they, they are doing it with this one. So we're going to start seeing improvements in optimization from this next upcoming update until probably the uh until the end of the game most likely um uh, so that's really cool i i like that they're doing that um it definitely helps a lot of players um to to enjoy the game if they're not running a supercomputer. so uh that's good that's that's good for that group i personally don't have an issue with that i've got my settings on ultra um all of my settings are on ultra so but i also uh i built my computer from the ground up too so um but yeah uh, that's really cool i'm glad that they're doing that about um any um sort of legendary things on your plates any <laughs> legends you'd like to talk about yes. uh, well so we've We've seen the, the fantastic reaction to the legendary fish in, in Golden Ridge, and it's it's it genuinely is a, a thrill each time you know that a, a new um, a new a new spawn happens and people are trying to hunt it down and work out where it is and try and get there first. And you know, everyone, everyone knows that we're going to be bringing the legendary fish to Norway as well. Well, we're getting nearer nearer to that time. Not this next patch, but 
we've got the fish lined up. We know who they are and what fish species. Oh. Um, so, I, you know, I, I guess we can we can mention them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Before we get shut down. Let's take our set aside. <laughs> All right. So um, we're, we are going to get legendary fish on Norway. It's not going to be this update, but it'll probably be the next one. Or the one after is how I should word that. It's not going to be this update, but the one after. Um, that's my guess. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, it sounds like they're going to tell us what species and maybe the names. So that's exciting. Let's take let's take a listen and uh, see what they say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people must people must know that that we're working on them. As Rushy said, this, they take a a little while to come in. It won't be in this patch, but. Um, they will be hopefully not too far after uh, Rushy Twitch mm. by what we'll catch up. But they need to be tuned. Uh, design folks need to, you know, make sure they're right. And uh, obviously, we still need to tidy up some of the art side of things as well. And, you know, the animation. There's so many things that go into uh, the oh. development of these things, uh, which is why it takes so much time. But, um, yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be too much, too far in the future. Because one of the big things with each of the legendaries as well is that we always try to make sure they've got unique traits of some form so they, they have some sort of bespoke behavior to them so that they, they feel quite distinct and, and different to the other fish inside the game. So obviously they're going to be bigger, <laughs> but also they should also yes. you know fight differently. And we need to make sure we pick all the right hideouts around Norway as well for you to try and find them, um, get them all in rotation as well. So yeah, it's a huge amount of work. But yeah, we've got three coming, much like in Golden Bridge. Uh, first up is um, these. Are, oh, by the way, we will need to get Ben on here. Uh, he can tell you some of the <laughs> yes. the, the backstories behind them because we we'd like to give them all a little bit lore and as to why these are legendary fish in each of the reserves. But I'll, I'll save that for Ben. But we've got Hal Paul the Dominator, <laughs> who's a Northern Pike. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> Sorry, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this next one right, but it's Spielfin, uh, and that's the Atlantic salmon. So that's going to be a big boy. Oh. Um, and then we've got finally um, Store Henrik, who's, who's a Berber. So, all right, so we're going to have a legendary Northern Pike, a legendary Atlantic Salmon, and a legendary Burbot. Um, so that's going to be really cool when that comes out. You know, I'm going to be all over that trying to catch those fish mainly because I've already done all the other missions on both maps. So, um, hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's a new challenge for me, uh, so I'm definitely going to be hunting those down when they come out. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to cut it out or not, so I'm just going to mention it. Uh, Rushy said that with the new update, there's it sounds like there's going to be some new customization options as well in terms of maybe gear and uh, skins for the uh, boats and jeeps so that's something to look forward to um, if it happens I don't know if it's gonna happen but it sounds like we're gonna get some new stuff to uh, to customize with so um, yeah ah, I'm excited guys I'm really excited I love it when they come out with something new for me to actually go after um, a new goal to reach I, I love that type of stuff so let's continue on and, uh, and I think that's the best part is I love to sit back and watch as our community sleuths it out and starts fitting all the pieces like a puzzle together. Um, it's really turned out to be a pleasure to watch these legendary. I can't wait to see more. So now, but just to clarify, this is not coming in this uh, big February update. We're looking at this sometime in the future. No date yet, correct? Uh-oh, Jaxie let it out. It was probably by mistake, but he let it out. Um, so it sounds like this update's coming this month in February. Um, he just said February update. Now, I don't know if that was a slip of the tongue or what, but I think we're going to be seeing this update the week of the 19th. That's, that's my prediction, the week of the 19th. And I say that because earlier, Gaz said that the update's going to come out here in a couple of weeks. So this is the week of the 5th. Two weeks from now would be the week of the 19th. So I'm, I'm anticipating, uh, when would they do it? When would be a good day to drop that? 
I'm anticipating either the 19th, 20th, or the 21st. That's what I'm anticipating. Don't quote me on it. I could be wrong. It could be released in March. Maybe Jaxi just knew that it was an update schedule for February. It might get pushed out to March. But as of right now, it sounds like we're going to get it towards the end of February, guys. Ho, ho, ho. Exciting stuff. Let's continue on. Okay, so, oh my goodness, I can't believe that's 50 minutes already. We're, we're going to try and get some questions from chat here because I've seen you guys, you've had so many coming through and I know we've missed so many of them because you can see it took that long for the beginning of the stream to get through what is coming in this next update. And I think maybe there was a little slip earlier. We're looking at a couple weeks, two, three weeks is what we're, we're aiming for. Is that what you said, Gaz? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait a Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, there you go. Um, uh, you know, uh, Jaxi, he's got to take some he's got to take some responsibility and some ownership as well. He's the one who said February. Um, Gaz did say a couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, they both kind of uh, slipped up there. <laughs> but but they did not give us a hard date. So. You know, uh, I think I think they're OK. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I think they're all right. Um, but it is good to know that most likely we're going to have this new community driven update by the end of February. That's awesome. That's great news. About two weeks. We'll just say February. February yeah. is a good. Yeah, good yeah. Time. There you go. But we're, we're able to get it out in the next few weeks. Yeah, because. Um, but we just don't want to do it too soon because it needs time a little bit yeah. more polish a little bit more bug testing um but it's close it's it's getting there so i think it, it won't be too far now so, something to look forward to guys and don't hold that to him you saw how i put him under the gun there don't hold that to him if <laughs> if, if something happens and they need to push it another week i don't want to be getting tagged but jaxi you said <laughs> all right guys so um uh, i'm probably going to cut out quite a bit of this ending here uh, it was more or less just kind of a wish list. Uh, they were talking about um, how they would like to possibly introduce clubs, like fishing clubs, um, tournaments, leaderboards, things of that nature. Uh, and then they were also talking about, um, shoot, what was it? I wasn't, it, it was just, like I said, it was a wish list type thing, so I wasn't really paying too much attention. Uh, but it was something along the lines of uh, crap. You know what? I forget. Um, it, it really wasn't something very impactful, um, especially at this stage where uh, it, it's not going to be something that's that we can expect anytime soon. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to call it there, guys. Uh, Jaxie's wrapping up right now as we speak. Um, if you want to, if you want to hear the whole thing that they're that their wish list type stuff, if you want to hear all the details on that, uh, check out their stream on uh, Twitch or on uh, YouTube, and you can watch the whole stream um, unedited. I'm editing it just because, uh, yeah, time and stuff. But um, anyways, guys, that's it. The, um, this next update is going to be huge. Lots of cool stuff. We've got the. Uh, we got the camera, um, different cameras for the vehicles, um, being able to adjust our camera while fishing. Uh, we've got um, the announcement of legendaries coming soon, not this patch, but soon, uh, probably next patch. We've got uh, some new stuff coming our way, probably, most likely in terms of customization. Uh, optimization stuff is coming our way uh, with this new patch. Um, Lots and lots of stuff, guys. Uh, so much stuff that I don't even remember it all. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, when the new patch comes out, I will be doing a video on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, happy fishing, guys. If you like the video, hit that like button. If I've earned it, hit that subscribe button. And, as always, be safe, be cool, and have fun. We'll catch you in the next one.